Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So Maharaj, we can start whenever you are ready, Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu, thank you. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschachadesha Tarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our Ishopanishad class. Everyone can hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, f first of all, maybe we'll just review a little what happened in the previous classes. Do you remember yesterday we spoke about the Lord and His potencies? Remember the verse? Tadejati tad naijati tad dure tad vantike tadantarasya sarvasya tadu sarvasya payataha. The Supreme Lord walks and he does not walk. He's far away, he's very near as well. He's within everything and he's outside of everything. So? Maharaj, Maharaj, would you like to share your screen? Uh, we're going to have the the verse. Going to put up. Okay, can you see it? Yes, Maharaj. We can see it, Maharaj. You can see mantra six, yeah. Yes, Maharaj. We can see mantra six. Okay. Anyway, we're discussing. The previous verse, Mantra 5, I was talking about that the Lord and His potencies. So how can we explain these contradictions? Someone like to tell us? Nara Narayan Prabhu, do you remember the co contradictions in the Lord? Yes, there's uh, contradictions, uh, Maharaj, but uh, that's the inconceivable power of the of the Lord, Maharaj. Yes. Can you tell me how the Lord walks, but He does not walk? Uh, there, there are few analogies, but uh, uh, what comes to mind is um, uh, is about the the, the sun and the, the, the sun's uh, rays. Although, although the sun is uh, fixed in one position, uh, it doesn't move, but uh, the, the rays of the sun, the warmth, the heat, you know, uh, it reaches us. So, uh, in that way, uh, the Lord is uh, there and the, in the same time is not there. No. Oh. Really? What about far away and near as well? How is he far away and how is he near? Uh, uh, the Lord may be in his abode uh, in Goloka Vrindavan. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's also close to uh, close to us, uh, sitting in our heart as the super soul. Okay, yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thanks, so then we, we also spoke about how the Lord's inconceivable potency can transform 
can transform one energy to another. Right? One of the Madhijis, maybe who's here today? Is Gandharvika Radharani here today? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, Gandharvika Radharani, you're here today. Oh, okay. Do you remember yes, we were speaking about the Lord's potencies? That He can. Yeah. He, I wrote that the power of the Lord is he, He's able to change material energy to spiritual energy. Yes, right. Do you, did you see it anywhere? Did you see any material energy made into spiritual energy? Um, food to prasadam, so bhoga to prasadam. Okay. Spirit. All these connections back to Krishna. Yes, right. That we offer the food to Krishna, it becomes prasadam, it becomes spiritual food, right? Oh my God. Is it different from material food? Yes, my God. What's the difference? Um, well, with material food, you can which is before offering, and then once you offer, it becomes prasad. Yeah, but how is it, does it, does it taste different? Does it have a different, yes, has a different effect? Uh, yes, Maharaj, it gives you good consciousness, good consciousness, I believe. Yes, it does, right? Prasadam, very yes. purifying, right? Prasadam is purifying. Yes, Maharaj. Eat prasadam, yes. we become purified. Food offered to Krishna, no karma, right? There's no karma in the food when it's offered to Krishna. But you eat food. What about if we eat vegetarian food? Does that have any karma? Um, it still has some karma, Maharaj, because um, even vegetarian food can be used for Right. Yeah, we get karma-free food by taking prasadam. By taking prasadam, we get purified, right? Yes, my Lord. Mm. Can we go back to Godhead just by eating prasadam? Yes, my Lord. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to know. Then we, we, spoke, we spoke also about the deities. Would somebody like to tell me something about the deities? Yes, who is this? Uh, Ram Gopinath. Oh, Ram Gopinath Prabhu, yes. Yeah, Lord appears in the form of Arjuna Vikraha, made of uh, earth and stone, so for material energy is not from spiritual energy. Okay. So how do you know the deity is spiritual? How, do, how does the deity become spiritual? Uh, we worship, uh, according to Shastra, they put Prana Pashta, and, and we worship the Vikraha through our Acharya Swami. Yeah, the, we, we have to have the Good devotee, pure devotee has to come and, and invite the Lord to appear in the deity. When you do the Pran Pratishta, it has to be, you have to have a pure devotee there, a good devotee, to invite the Lord to appear in the deity. So at the request of the devotee, Krishna enters into the deity. And the deity gets transformed from the material to the spiritual. So this, we spoke about those, do you remember those words? Uh, saguna and nirguna. Do you remember those two words? Anyone? 
Yes, Mataji, what's your name? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, who's... Sankhya who? Rasa. You're Sankhya... San, Sankhya Rasa? Satya Rasa. Satya Rasa, okay. Uh, Saguna is uh, with qualities, as Nirguna is without qualities. Okay. These so, qualities are spiritual qualities. Nirguna means what? Spiritual qualities. Without qualities. Without qualities. And saguna is what? Material qualities or spiritual qualities? Material qualities. Okay. So is the Lord saguna or nirguna? God is nirguna. But the deity can be saguna because the deity has qualities. And these qualities are, you see, it, it's interesting. The deity worship can be saguna also, as well as nirguna. So we 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 spoke also the deity. It's different from idol worship. You know, the Christians, they often attack us. The Christian people, they say, you people, you worship idols. And in the Bible it says, Jesus said, you should not worship any graven image. So you people are worshipping idols. You all go to hell. So what can we say to them? Anyone can reply? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Who is this? Uh, Jolene Mataji. Oh, Jolene Mataji, yes. Hare Krishna. Isn't the cross also made of wood? <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> the cross is made of wood, yeah. And so they're worshipping the cross. No, but when we talk about the deity worship, we want them to understand our deities are not idols. They're different from idols, you see. An idol is something which a person creates according to his own mind. By his power and mental speculation, he imagines a form and he will create that form and worship it. And it's a statue. It has no life. But the deity is very different. The f first of all, the form of the deity is from Shastra, from the, our scriptures. The form of the Lord is described for us. And we're, we're worshipping that form as it's described in our scriptures. Just like we worship often Gornitai. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they've appeared 500 years ago, we know what form they like. And the form of Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra, it's been worshipped for 2,000 years or more. And so we know exactly the form which the Lord takes. And we're worshipping the same form. So it's according to Shastra. That's not idol worship. And we also, by the, by the grace of the Lord, the Lord's energy can enter into that form and the Lord can incarnate into that form. Because we say God can He has avatars. Avatars mean, who knows the meaning of avatar? What does it mean? Did you see that movie? Did you see the movie Avatar? Probably all of you saw it, right? <laughs> what does the word Avatar mean? One person? I'm not able to understand what you're saying. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, can you tell me the meaning of the word avatar? Is that descendant? Yes, it means descendant. one who it means one who comes down, right? It means one who comes down, one who descends. So the Lord descends from the spiritual world. He can appear by his own will or at the invitation, at the request of his devotee. The, the devotees request the Lord to come. And he can come and he can enter by his power, he can enter into the form of the deity and accept our worship. So in that way we perform worship of the Lord, the worship of the deity. It's not idol worship. We're not iconoclasts. Iconoclasts are people who say we, are, we worship idols, we worship some imaginary form. But these forms of the deities are, are authorized from the scriptures and these forms have been worshipped for a long time, like Jagannath has been worshipped for many thousands of, of years and Radha and Krishna, all Krishna's form has been worshipped for a very long time and like this. So it's, it's not idol worship, that's what we say, like that. This, we say this is deity worship and the deities actually, we, we actually see how the deity can reciprocate with his devotees, how the deity has life. That some deities are known to speak, they, they can speak with the devotee and sometimes they even walk, they even leave the temple sometimes. And sometimes they will take things and do things, play tricks with the devotees. So. This is all recorded in scriptures and it's been experienced. M many, many people, they know about these things. Of course, devotees know about these things. People who are not devotees, it's very difficult for them to understand. Okay, one more thing we want to revise. I wanted to know, what is the meaning of Atmaha? Some, someone? Killer of the soul. Killer of the soul. The killer of the soul. All right. What, what do you mean? How you, I thought the soul cannot be killed. How can, so how can it be killer of the soul? Can you explain to me? By engaging ourselves in sinful activities, Maharaj. Okay. By doing activities which are not in the, in the interests of the soul. In other words, when one is only interested in the body and the senses, material activities, so they, they do acts which result in the soul going where? Where does the soul go? Yes. Okay, if uh, the soul doing a lot of uh, sinful activities and end up in the hell, hell is... Yes, they'll go down into the darkest regions of ignorance, into the hellish regions, planets, or into the, the lower forms of life, like that, yes. Okay, very good. So we're going to go ahead. Right? We're on the uh, mantra six. We'll, um, let me see who have we got here to read for us today. Um, is Rasika Radha Krishna here? What about Toruni Champakalata? No reply, my goodness. Tanushi Sebalinga. Tanusha. Tanusha Sebalinga. Yes, Mataji, can you read for us? 
Yes, Maharaj. Read the Sanskrit mantra six, one line at a time. Okay, Maharaj. Yastu Sarvani Bhutani. Yes. Tu Sarvani Bhutani. Atmani Evanu Pasyati. Atmani Evanu Pasyati. Sarva Bhute Shu Chatmanam. Sarva Bhute Shu Chatmanam. Tato Na Viju Guksate. Tato Na Okay, very good. Now, translation. He who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord who sees all living entities as his part and parcels and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anything or any being. Okay, so you can understand. Do you, do you see like that? Are you able to see everything in relation to Krishna? Sometimes, eh? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> And we, then we want to see all living entities as his parts and parcels. Oh. Yes, Maharaj. Mm. We have to see everything in relation to Christ. So see everyone as his parts and parcels and see the Supreme Lord within everything. And then the result, yes, the result is we never hate anything or any being, right? You don't hate anything or any being, do you, Tanusha? I'm trying, Maharaj. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, we're all trying. We're trying to be devotees, you know, it's not easy, you know, we're trying to become devotees. Prabhupada said like that, he said, you know, it's not an easy thing to become a Vaishnava, Vaishnavi. We're trying to become. Okay? So, can you read, okay. the pur read the purport a little bit for us? Uh, this is a description of the Mahabhagavata, the great personality who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Lord's presence is realized in three stages. The Kanishta Adhikari is in the lowest stage of realization. He goes to a place of worship such as a temple, church or mosque. According to his religious faith and worships there according to scriptural injunctions, devotees in this stage consider the Lord to be present at the place of worship and nowhere else. They cannot ascertain who is in what position in devotional service, nor can, what, nor can they tell who has realized the Supreme Lord. Such devotees follow the routine formulas and sometimes quarrel among themselves, considering one type of devotional devotion be better than another. These Kanista Adhikaris are actually materialistic devotees who are simply trying to trans transcend the material boundary to reach the spiritual plane. Oh, thank you very much, Tanusha. Very nice. Okay, so we hear a nice description here about the devotee who is called the Kanista Adhikari. Kanista Adhikari means the devotee, he's like the junior devotee, just like, you know, you have the big brother and the little brother. So Kanista Adhikari, he's like the youngest brother, the smallest, he's young, or the, the junior devotee. Maybe because he's new, he hasn't been around a long time, so he doesn't know so much, but he comes to the temple, he likes to come to the temple, he may go to church, he may go to mosque, you know, God is there according to their religion, different faith, they go to worship in the different places. But generally they think God is only in the temple, <laughs> so they go to the temple, and they behave very nice. That's why they introduce temple worship, to get people to behave nicely. Because when they go to the temple, then people will be very, you know, often people, they, 
They think, oh, I'm going to temple, I have to take bath, I have to put on clean cloth, like that. And they'll go to the temple, and, uh, and then they go to the temple, they'll put the tilak and everything. And go in the temple, of course, when we go in the temple, we take off our shoes, we don't wear the shoes in the temple. And we go to the temple, we'll be more uh, respectful. We won't, we shouldn't shout, and we shouldn't use bad language, and we must be very truthful in the temple. Like that, there's a special behavior when we go in the temple. And so the Kanista devotee, he thinks God is in the temple, but they don't think God, they don't think of God outside the temple, but they see him in the temple. So that's one point about the Kanista devotee. Another point is they don't know who is really the devotee. They can't tell the difference between a devotee and a non-devotee. They don't really care. <laughs> they only care about God in the temple. They see the Lord in the temple and they offer their respect to Him. They don't see God within other people. Like we were just reading in the verse which Tanusha Mataji chanted, that God, uh, the devotee, he sees God in the hearts of everyone. He sees everyone as a part and parcel of the Lord. But the Kanista devotee, he doesn't see like that. He only sees God in the, de in the temple, especially in the deity. And they, he cannot tell who's a devotee and who is not a devotee. But, they come to temple and they follow the routine. You know, they do the things, they bow down and they offer the prayers. And, but Prabhupada said sometimes they quarrel among themselves. That's the tendency of the new devotee, the neophytes, neophytes, the junior devotee. Prabhupada says, Kanista Adhikari are actually materialistic devotees. So they often quarrel among or with the other devotees. They have difficulty to get along. You know Kali Yuga, this age is called Kali Yuga. And one of the symptoms of the Kali Yuga, one of the symptoms about Kali Yuga, we quarrel with each other. We like to quarrel <laughs> and we quarrel about little things sometimes as well, things which are not very important. We make a big issue out of them. So this is one of the problems which we, we sometimes face. The junior devotee, Kanista devotee, we make a big argument, sometimes People would write to Prabhupada and they would write to Prabhupada complaining. Prabhupada said, Oh, he said, This is a Kanista, this is a junior, this is a junior type of mentality, the Kanista devotee. You only quarrel and find fault with each other. But if somebody wrote to Prabhupada and they would praise the devotees, they say, Oh, devotees are doing so nice, they're all working so hard. They're helping each other, preaching, and I feel so happy with them. The Prabhupada would feel very good and say, Oh, you're a very good devotee because you see the good in the devotees. But if you only see the bad in the devotee, you only quarrel, this is not good. This is a, the nature of the materialistic devotee, material world. We're always quarreling and arguing with each other. So much trouble, difficulty to get along. Isn't it like that? Do you find that true? Do you have that problem? Arguing? <laughs> you know, Kali Yuga. 
How to overcome the quarreling? Chant Hare Krishna. Do more kirtan, do more chanting. Don't quarrel, don't waste their time arguing. Try to see good in the other devotees. So Prabhupada said, Kanista are trying to transcend the material boundary to reach the spiritual plane. They have not really come to the spiritual plane. Means they're still more in the bodily concept of life. But they're devotees. They are devotees. They do have some devotion. So that's good. And they can become better devotees. They become better devotees by association, by hearing and taking association from senior devotees. Okay? Any questions about Kanista devotees? Is it clear? Yeah, my life. Okay. So we'll go ahead. Uh, let's have somebody read the second part. What about is uh, Kripa Murti Goranga come yet? No? Uh, Kundalata Mataji, Kundalata Radha Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaji. Those who have attained the second stage of realization are called Madhya Madhyaris. These devotees observe the distinction between four categories of being the Supreme Law the supreme devotee of the Lord, the innocent who have no knowledge of the Lord and the atheists who have no faith in the Lord and hate those in devotional service. The Madhyama Adhikari behave differently toward these four classes of person. He adores the Lord, considering him the object of love. He makes friends with those who are in devotional service, he tried to awaken the dormant love of God in the heart of the innocent, and he avoid the atheists who drive the very name of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj Yes. So the Madhyam Adhikari. Madhyam means intermediate, in the middle. He, he has a a different vision from the Kanista devotee. He sees four different kinds of people. He sees the Supreme Lord, just like we said, the deity. You go and see the deity. So how do we behave with the deity? We offer our worship to the deity. We offer prayers to the Deity, we offer arti to the Deity, we sing and dance in front of the Deity. We do many different services for the, for the Supreme Lord, right? So the, the Lord, we're very fortunate when we have the Lord, when we have the Deity there, that we can make friends, we can, we can become so absorbed in thinking of the Lord. Just like in Malays in Kuala Lumpur, you think of Lord Jagannath and you think of the festivals for Lord Jagannath and make outfits, new dresses for him and make a nice Rati Atra for him, and different programs for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. So for the Supreme Lord, we offer our worship and then we have the devotees of the Lord and we have to make friends with the devotees, right? Those who are in devotional service, he makes friends. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes 
how we make friends with the devotees uh, described in the in the tenth chapter, verse number nine. Matchita madgata prana bodayantas parasparam katayantas tam tamam nityam tushyanti cha ramanti cha. Krishna is saying, the thoughts of my devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered unto me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another and conversing about me. So this is how devotees associate with each other. They enlighten one another and converse about Krishna or Lord Jagannath. The devotees, when they come together, they will enjoy loving exchanges. We, we offer gifts and we accept gifts. We offer prasadam and we accept prasadam. And we inquire, inquire confidentially and reveal our minds in confidence. This is the activities of devotees, when we, how we associate together. We will sometimes together we'll go for preaching, sometimes we'll do sankirtan together, different arrangements for festivals, we celebrate the festivals together. Did you celebrate Ratiatra there this year? Did, no? You didn't have a Ratiatra this year? You're waiting, is it? You're going to do it later. Okay, and the, so with the devotees, that's like our peers, you know, our friends. We are so, but then you've got the, the innocent people who have no knowledge of the Lord. So, what about them? We try to give them mercy. We want to help them to become devotees. So we, may, we, 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 we try to encourage them. Of course, we also can give them prasadam and uh, give them presents and give them like japa beads and a big bag, give them Prabhupada's books and try to help them to get, to get some f knowledge about Krishna, to help them to become devotees, to attract people into the movement. So they're innocent, means they're willing to hear. And they may even have many questions they want to ask. So then we like to help them to answer their questions. But then there's the fourth class of people, the atheist, who have no faith. And they hate devotees, <laughs> hate those in devotional service. Some people hate devotees, right? They have no faith in Krishna. No faith in Lord Jagannath and they don't like Hare Krishna devotees. We, we know, we, we get some people like that. So, how to deal with them? Well, we have to avoid them. We show them mercy. We show them mercy by neglecting them, by going away from them, by keeping away from them. We don't want to disturb them. Because if we disturb them, they just become more angry. And then when they become more angry, they commit more offences. And when they commit more offences, then they go further away from Krishna. So it's very important for us to be able to distinguish between these two kinds of people. Who is the innocent and who is the atheist? Who are those who hate devotees? We want to be careful to make this distinction. It's not easy sometimes, you don't know. And sometimes there are people who hate devotees, but they, they, they disguise themselves and they come just to give you trouble, just to, just to give you a, make your life really difficult. Anyway, this is a Madhyam devotee. This is a devotee who is actually doing the preaching work. So this second class devotee, this Madhyama Adhikari, 
This position is very important because this is the position of those people who will have to go out for preaching and they have to be able to distinguish between the atheist and the innocent. So, uh, going out for preaching, that's something Prabhupada liked us all to get some experience of, to go out and do some book distribution. Have any of you ever gone out for book distribution? I'm, I'm sure yes, Mother. I'm sure the men have gone out. For, I know Nara Narayan likes to go and distribute books. What about the ladies? Have some of the ladies gone for book distribution? Yes, you're there. Really? Yes. What about what about Kundala Kundalata Mataji? Did you go for book distribution? Yes, Maharaj. Did you have any difficulties meeting people? Yes, sometimes, yes. Did you meet some atheists, some people who hated devotees? God, yes, I faced that also. <laughs> what did you do when you met them? And then I say, Hare Krishna, then I just keep quiet and I go away. And you just, I didn't talk more, but yes. Just go, yeah, right. Mm. Go. Leave the place. Right, just leave the place, right. Yeah, we're not Lord Nityananda that you can go to ja <laughs> Jaga in Madhai, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I always used to try to go to everyone. But then the, the, the devotee told me, he said, you're not Lord Nityananda, you can't liberate all the ja Jagai and Madhai. Just stay away from them. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes some people say, oh, we should see everyone equally. We should see everyone equally. But we see that they're not all equal. Some people are you know, some people are friendly, some people are innocent, and some people are hateful or spiteful or envious. Not everybody's the same. So, in one sense, everyone is equal, that they're all souls, but they're all in different categories, in different bodies, in different conditions, with different moods and karma. And we have to relate to them accordingly. So a Madhyama devotee has to be intelligent. He has to be able to distinguish between these different kinds of people. And the Madhyam devotee also can help a lot for the Kanista devotee. Because if someone's on that platform of being a Madhyam devotee, then he can inspire the Kanista devotee because he can show the Kanista devotee the pleasure of devotional service. And he can show them that, that God is not only in the temple, but he can see the Lord in the heart of other people. Now the Lord is also in the heart of these people who are atheists and who hate devotees. The Lord is also in their heart, but they're not listening to Him. Their hearts are dark, their hearts are covered. They don't want to hear from Krishna, although He's in their heart. But He's there, Krishna is everywhere. He's also in the hearts of the atheists, but they don't want to hear about Krishna. They reject him. But for the devotee, then it's different. The Lord is in their heart and He reveals Himself. And He helps them to come to Him. From, his, from the heart of the devotee, Krishna inspires them and instructs them 
how to improve and how to advance in Krishna consciousness. So the Madhyam devotee Prabhupada liked all of us to try to come to this platform of the Madhyama Adhikari because then we can preach, we can help to distribute Krishna consciousness. Okay, we'll go ahead. Is, uh, is Indra, Indrani Maharaji here? Maybe Jolene, you could read. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Above the Madhyama Adhikari is the Uttama Adhikari, who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord. Such a devotee does not discriminate between an atheist and a theist but sees everyone as part and parcel of God. He knows that there is no essential difference between a vastly learned Brahmana and a dog in the street because both of them are part and parcel of the Lord, although they are engaged in different bodies on account of the different qualities of their activities in their previous lives. He sees that the Brahmana particle of the Supreme Lord has not misused his little independence given him by the Lord, and that the dog particle has misused his independence and is therefore being punished by the laws of nature by being engaged in the form of a dog. Not considering the respective actions of the Brahmana and the dog, the Uttama Adhikari tries to do good to both. Such a learned devotee is not misled by material bodies but is attracted by the spiritual spark within them. Okay, thank you, Maharaji. So, this is the vision of the Uttama Adhikari, or we could say that the topmost devotee, or the Mahabhagavad devotee, like that we describe someone on that platform, that they're very on a high level of Krishna consciousness, and they're able to see, they, they see all living entities equally, in a sense. At least they see them all as being part and parcel of God. They understand there's a soul in everyone. In the Bhagavad Gita, this kind of vision is described. There's a verse in the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Vidya Vinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavihastini Suni Chaiva Swaparkicha Pandita Samadashana, that one who sees with an equal vision the learned and gentle Brahmana, the elephant, the cow, the dog, and the dog eater. <laughs> so, the learned and gentle Brahmana and the dog eater and the dog, he sees them all equal because he sees within each of them there's a soul. There's the, the, the spirit soul. The Lord is there in the heart and the individual soul is also there. So he doesn't just see the body, but he sees the spirit soul, the, the living force in the body. And he understands the difference between both of them. One has made good use, they've done some good, so they've got the body of the Brahmana, and the other one is misused. He's done some bad activities, so he's in the body of a dog. The dog's body, this is their bad karma. They did some bad activities, they get the body of the dog. But the, the one who does some good activities, he gets the body of a brahmana, maybe born in the brahmana family. And so that's making proper use of the independence which we're given. We're all given independence, free will, how, how we can act. And when we act according to the laws of the Lord, then we get good results. And we act against the laws of the Lord, we get punished, we get a bad result. And the bad results come, we're put into the form of the animal, like that, like a dog. It's 
it's not a very good condition. But the Uttama Adhikari, he gives mercy to both, to all of these creatures, all of these living entities. He sees them all as souls and he wants to help all of them by giving them Krishna consciousness. How will you help a brahmana? What can you do for a brahmana? Jolene, would you know? How would you help a brahmana? I don't quite know bef uh, beyond giving a respect. I don't think I can answer the question very well. Okay, you give the brahmana some respect. You could also give him a Bhagavad Gita. You could give him a scripture like that and tell him this is the Bhagavad Gita. You may like to have a copy. You can also feed him. You can give him prasada. Brahmanas also have to eat. They enjoy eating prasada. Like that. This showing respect for the brahmana. Mm -hmm. And what about a dog? How will you help a dog? I'm not too sure how would you help uh, the dogs in Malaysia because we have a lot of strays. <laughs> yeah. Well. Of course we can feed them. At the same time, um, if they live uh, too near around the house, they also create mess. What What are you going the, to what, what, outside the house? What are you What are you going to feed them? The dog food, but. Yeah, in, in that sense, if you feed them the bellies, those are made from meat as well. No, 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 we don't feed the I dog. Guess, no, that's, the best way is that's to not the helping dog the dog. Yes, right. You have to give the dog prasad. If you give the dog meat, you get karma for that. But if you give the dog prasad, then you're helping the dog. So you give the dog prasadam. Hmm? They, that, that's, and you can also chant Hare Krishna to the dog. Let it hear the holy name. That is also charity. When you do the loud chanting of the holy name, the dogs also hear. And so you chant the holy name to them. Chant the Maha Mantra. Let them hear the holy name of Lord Krishna or Govinda and the dog will be greatly benefited. Okay? We want to do good for all creatures. We have to learn how to help these different creatures. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it's described how the devotees were going to Jagannath Puri and the dog was following them. So every day the devotees arranged to give prasadam to the dog. And every day dog would follow them. And one, sometimes they had to go on the boat to cross the river. So they would take the dog with them and they would have to pay for the dog also. So they, they brought the dog with them because they saw the dog is following us. It must be a devotee. And then in this way the dog came to Jagannath Puri and when they got to Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya gave the dog, he took the, the meat from the coconut, gave it coconut meat, not animal meat, he gave it coconut meat. And the dog was eating and barking and chanting Hare Krishna. And so this way give mercy to the dogs. Of course we're more interested to give mercy to the people but we, we don't neglect any living entity. Our duty is to be kind to everyone and to bring them to the spiritual platform. Now in the Srimad Bhagavatam there's a story about one devotee called Bharat Maharaj. He saved the life of a deer. A young deer had fallen in the river and he saved it and it had no mother, so he began to take care of this young deer. But he didn't help it to become a, a devotee, he didn't help it to become spiritually advanced. Instead, he just became attached to the deer. 
Now you have to be very careful. People have dogs and they get so attached to their dog and take their dog to get their hair cut and take their dog to the dog parlor and take their dog to the dog party. Oh my goodness, you know. They don't, you know, this is not what's supposed to be. That's not mercy to a dog. Just having a love for a dog. Some people have the dog, they sleep with the dog every night. The dog gets on their bed and sleeps with them. Oh my goodness, you know. The dog's meant to stay outside. You don't bring the dog in the house. We keep them out. We give them prasada. But don't get attached to them. Don't get, you know, too affectionate with them. That's very bad. Is it clear? You understand? Yes, Maharaj. Even Lord Chaitanya, there's, it's told how one time, Lord Chaitanya, when he was a young boy, he got some puppies and he brought the puppies home. And his mother saw them and she thought, oh no. She said, you're the Brahmana, you're a son of a Brahmana, and you've got these puppies. And so when Lord Chaitanya went to school, or when he went to take bath in the Ganga, Mother said she took the dogs away and she put them some other place, so that she didn't want her son to be with, have these dogs at home, or to be spending his time with dogs. Okay, we can give some mercy to them. We try to help them to improve their situation, to come to a higher form of life. Okay, let's... Here, there's a bit more. Someone else would like to read? Who's not read? Uh, I would like to read. Oh, Mary, is it? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. Those who imitate an Uttama Adhikari by flaunting a sense of oneness, of fellowship, but who behave on the bodily platform are actually false philanthropists. The conception of universal brotherhood must be learned from an Uttama Adhikari and not from a foolish person who does not properly understand the individual soul or the Supreme Lord's super soul expansion. Who dwells everywhere. Okay, so Prabhupada said we should not imitate this uh, Uttama Adhikari. He's the advanced devotee, he's on the highest platform. And how may we might imitate them, but that we try to show a sense of oneness that, oh, it's we're all one in the bottom a sense of oneness or fellowship, but who behave on the bodily platform. So they, they, they may talk about oneness, but actually they're still in the bodily conception of life. And so oneness is there on the spiritual platform, that we're all souls. But we have to remember it's different according to the body. Just like a tiger is also a soul. But we don't relate with the tiger just like we do with a human being. We think of them as our brother. Oh, my dear brother tiger, and we can embrace the tiger. You get a big problem, you try to do that. The tiger will bite you or eat you. So we have to understand there are different bodies and we do have to have some consideration for the body. Just like we don't bring dogs in the temple. You know, some people like to bring their dogs. But, of course, we don't allow dogs to come in the temple. Because the dogs don't know how to behave. They're animals. They cannot properly distinguish between the temple and the, and the, the backyard. So, we have to make some distinction in terms of the body. Well, there is a a sense of oneness, but still there's a difference also. So this understanding of brotherhood has to be learned from a proper devotee who is really the advanced devotee, not from somebody who doesn't understand 
the soul and the super soul. Okay, go ahead, Mary, read the next paragraph. Okay. It is clearly mentioned, it is clearly mentioned in this sixth mantra that one should observe or systematically see. This means that one must follow the previous acharyas, the perfected teachers. Anupastati is the exact Sanskrit word used in this connection. Anu means to follow and Pashati means to observe. Thus, the word Anupashati means that one should not see things as he does with the naked eye, but should follow the previous Acharyas. Due to material defects, the naked eye cannot see anything properly. One cannot see properly unless one has heard from the Lord to Brahma, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyasa, and from Vyasa to many of his disciples. Formerly, there was no need to record the messages of the Vedas because people in earlier ages were more intelligent and had sharper memories. They could follow the instructions simply by hearing once from the mouth of a bona fide spiritual master. Okay, so simply by hearing from the spiritual master. <laughs> we just see how bad our memories have become. Prabhupada said they could follow the instructions simply by hearing once from the mouth. We have to hear many times, you know, it's, our memories are not like they were in the previous ages. Okay, so Prabhupada is mentioning about this word anupashyati, means one should not see things as he does with the eye, but should follow the previous acharya, right? So we have to see in other words, we have to see through the actions of the previous acharyas. Our eyes are not perfect. We already learned in the beginning, we have imperfect senses. Our eyes cannot see properly. We give more importance to hearing than to seeing. So we have to hear from the acharyas, from the, the, the authorities, from our teachers, the higher authorities, the acharyas. We have to hear from Prabhupada. The, Prabhupada said, the highest source is the Vedic wisdom spoken by the Lord Himself. Right? What kind of scripture is that? What was spoken by the Lord Himself? Gita. Bhagavad Gita, yes. Bhagavad Gita is Vedic wisdom spoken by the Lord Himself. Okay, very good. Vedic truths come, disciplic succession, Prabhupada describes from Krishna to Brahma, Brahma to Narada, Narada to Vyas, Vyas has many, Narada has many disciples, Vyas also has many disciples. So, then Prabhupada said, there was no need to record the message. We didn't need to write anything down. Before the Kali Yuga, before this Kali Yuga, people had very good memories. They could hear, they could remember. Prabhupada told the example. He said, there were two men and they had one argument. They had one argument. And so the one man was a witness and the one man got called to court because the two men went to court and they had the argument and they, this one man came as a witness. So the judge asked the one man, said, what happened? So the man said, he said, well, I do not know the language they were speaking. He said, I'm not from this place, I don't speak the language which they were speaking. But he said, I remember what they said. And the man went on to tell the judge what they said. And the man, he said, I don't understand what it means, but this is what they said. The man had such a memory that even though he didn't know the language, he could remember every word they had said. So this, you know, this is a kind of memory people used to have. Nowadays we have very poor memories. If we don't understand anything, we don't know the language, we, can, we, we, we can't remember anything. 
But in the past, very sharp memories could remember. We can see how the Goswamis wrote books, they quoted so many verses, they could recite so many scriptures. So before the Kali Yuga, there was no need to write the Vedas down. But Kali Yuga began, so Vyas wrote the Vedas. He wrote everything down. He wrote the Vedas, he wrote Mahabharata, he wrote Puranas, because he knew people have very bad memories. We have to write everything down for them, let them hear, and this way will be clear. So they could follow the instructions. Okay, we have a little more to read. Someone who can read? Who's not read? Anybody there not read yet? Read? Okay. Yes? Okay. Huh? Okay. I'm reading Maharaj. Who's this? Uh, Suryanga Chaitanya Prabhu. Oh, Maharaj. okay Prabhu, please. At present there are many commentaries on the revealed scriptures, but most of them are not in the line of disciplic succession coming from Srila Vyasadeva, who originally compiled the Vedic wisdom. The final, most perfect and sublime work by Srila Vyasadeva is Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. There is also the Bhagavad Gita, which was spoken by the Lord Himself and recorded by Vyasadeva. These are the most important revealed scriptures and any commentary that contradicts the principles of the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam is unauthorized. There is complete agreement among the Upanishads, Vedanta Sutta, Vedas, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam is, and, and no one should try to reach any conclusion about the Vedas without receiving instruction from members of Vyasadeva's specific section who believe in the personality of Godhead and his diverse energies as they are explained in Sri Isopanishad. Okay, thank you Prabhu. So, Prabhupada is explaining about these scriptures because we have to hear from the scriptures. He said many commentaries because there's other people, other sampradayas, other groups, other different acharyas, they have nothing to do with our line. So they're not coming from Vyasa Dev. So they give their own commentaries. We see so many different Bhagavad Gitas, explaining Bhagavad Gita so many different ways. Somebody is saying Krishna is a doctor and Arjuna is a patient. Somebody is saying Pandavas are the five senses and Kurukshetra is the body. So many different interpretations in the Bhagavad Gita. So we have to hear from the disciplic succession, Bhagavad Gita as it is, from Srila Vyasadeva. And Srila Vyasadeva also wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srimad Bhagavatam was written after he wrote the Vedanta Sutra. First he wrote Vedanta Sutra. And Vedanta Sutra is the summary. Veda means the knowledge. And anta means the end, right? And sutra means, sutra means very condensed, put in a very short form. So not easy to understand. If you read the Vedanta Sutra, very hard to understand. So Srimad Bhagavatam is the commentary, the explanation of the Vedanta Sutra. People like to read Vedanta Sutra, but they should read Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the better thing for them to hear. They read Vedanta Sutra, they will not understand. But if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, then you get good knowledge, good education. So then Prabhupada talks about Bhagavad Gita, most important the, these most important scriptures any commentary that goes against these teachings, then it's not authorized. If somebody says something, of course there's different commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita, but ours is the Vaishnava 
commentary. And we follow the Vaishnava commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, and the Vaishnava commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. This is authorized. And Prabhupada says there should be agreement between all these scriptures, the Upanishads, the Vedanta Sutra, the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. They should all agree. Not that the one says one and the other one says something different. No, they all agree. They should all teach about devotional service. So they sh shouldn't reach any conclusion without receiving instruction from Srila Vyasadeva's disciplic succession. Okay, go ahead. Who's not read yet? Can I read Maharaj? Yes, please. Who is it? What Punita. Should... Punita? Yes, please. Yeah. According to the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, text 54, only one who is already on the liberated platform, Brahma Bhutta, Srimad Bhagavadam, Canto 4, 30, chapter 30, text 20, can become an Uttama Adhikari, devotee, and see every living being as his own brother. This vision cannot be had by politicians who are always after some material gain. One who imitates the symptoms of an Uttama Adhikari may sit, serve another's outward body for the purpose of fame or material reward, but he does not serve the spirit soul. Such an imitator can have no information of the spiritual world. The Uttama Adhikari sees the spirit soul within the material body and serves him as spirit. Thus, thus the material aspect is automatically served. Thank you, Manuji. So, Bhagavad Gita 1854. It said, you cannot be an Uttama Adhikari unless you have come to the platform of Brahman. One who is already on the platform of Brahman. How will we know? What, is, what kind of realization will they have if one is actually a liberated, on that liberated platform? Maharaji, would you know? Pun Punita? Maharaji? Uh, what does it mean, Brahma Bhutta? He has no material desires and fixed on Krishna. Okay. Might be fixed on Krishna, may not. One could be Brahma Bhutta and may not be a devotee. The impersonalists also come up to the Brahma Bhutta because they talk. Uh, yes, what? Brahma Bhutta, no material desire? Sorry, Maharaj. Someone who's from material bottle. Yes. Someone, I'm sorry, Sun free, from, free from? Free from material. Bondage? Yes, free from material, liberated platform. How do they think of themselves? They will think of themselves as, as what? One with God. Right. One with God? Okay, think of themselves as one with God. They will think of themselves certainly as Brahman, right? They will think that, that I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi. In other words, I'm not the body, I am a, I'm a soul, I'm Brahman. This is the meaning of the Brahma Bhutta. So Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma, Bhagavad Gita 1854 says, Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma. One who knows he's Brahman, then what does he think? Pra what, do you know the meaning, Prasanatma? Prasanna means joyful. Yes, yeah, prasan atma, a joyful soul. Yeah, a happy, a joyful soul. One who is on the platform of Brahman will be a joyful soul. In the same way, what about a Krishna conscious devotee? How, what about us? What's our platform? We are so 
servants of the Lord. Okay. So are we also Brahma Buddha? Yes. Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> yes. So are you joyful? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, I'm very glad to hear it. <laughs> yes, if we're not joyful, we're not in Krishna consciousness. If, if, if somebody's not joyful, if they're not blissful, it means they're not in Krishna consciousness. Because a Krishna conscious devotee is prasanatma, he's, he's on the platform of Brahman. Our devotional service begins on the Brahma Buddha platform, right? It's not the goal, but it's the beginning of our devotional service. Understanding, I'm not the body, I'm a soul, and my soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Soul. So then, therefore we see every living being as our own brother or sister, right? The dogs in the street, the insects, the mosquitoes, do you see them as your brother? <laughs> What do you say we should do, right? Brahma Buddha, joyful soul. We know we're not the body, we know we are Brahman. And the nature of Brahman is? What's the nature of Brahman? Hare Krishna, is everybody there? Can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, What's the nature of Brahman? Bliss, Maharaj. Yeah, because say it's joyful, bliss, blissful. But it's the bliss of Brahman is nothing compared to the bliss of devotional service. The bliss of Brahman is only a tiny part of the happiness compared to devotional service. Devotional service gives much, much more happen. But on the platform of Brahman, there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no you know, misery or lamenting, because that's all on the body. So Brahman is free from all of that. So it's the Brahma Bhutta Prasanna. A little blissful, not the bliss of bhakti, of devotional service. Devotional service is much bigger bliss, right? So we see, he sees everyone like his own brother. Remember the, the Saint Francis of Assisi, famous Christian uh, saint? He would say, my dear sister flower, my dear brother tree, like that. And Prabhupada said, oh, this is real God consciousness. When Prabhupada heard about this, he said, oh, he was very God conscious, that man, that saint. So Prabhupada said, this vision cannot be had by politicians. They're, they're always on the bodily platform, the mon some material gain. So people may imitate an Uttama Adhikari. One who imitates the symptoms may serve another's outward body for the purpose of fame or material reward. He doesn't serve the soul, right? You, you, you look after people, you do some welfare program, take care of their bodies. You know, this is not serving the soul, just feeding the belly of hungry people. That's not really spiritual. Just to put food in the belly or to give some shelter or take care of the sick. So that is not really spiritual. That's welfare activity for the body. So an imitator can have no information of the spiritual world. 
They don't know about the spiritual world, but the Uttama Adhikari, he sees the soul within the body and he will take care of that soul to help them develop Krishna consciousness. So the material aspect is served in that way. Okay, any questions on this? Prudev, I want to clarify a certain inquiries. Okay. As devotees, Gurudev, despite of being initiated devotees, but we are still yet only aspiring to be devotees, right? Not yet in the category of a devotee also, right? I'm just a bit twofold on this. Well, anybody who begins to chant Hare Krishna, they've begun their devotional life. So as soon as they begin to chant Hare Krishna, anybody who chants Hare Krishna one time, we consider him a devotee. Mm. But there are different levels of devotees. Mm. So someone's just began, they're not chanting regularly. Someone else is chanting regularly. Is it clear? Yeah, good. So we're not, we don't, we won't be looked at as aspiring devotees, but devotees? Yes, devotees. Okay. You may, right. you may say aspiring for initiation, that's a different thing. Aspiring to surrender or aspiring to advance, this is a different thing. But they're already devotees. Yes, they've started chanting. They chant one time, their devotional life has begun. Okay. Is, it okay, is it clear? Yeah? Yeah, Gurudev, I was asking only because uh, the Bhagavad Gita class by Sri Radhika Mataji, uh -huh. there we were being told every time that uh, only just because you're initiated devotee doesn't mean you are a devotee in reality. There are initiated devotees, but also yet aspiring to become actual devotees in reality. So you have to wait till you reach the level of actual devotion service and become an actual pure devotee. <laughs> so I was a bit confused. I was thinking, okay. So she said, even though we are all devotees, but we're not yet devotees in reality. So I was like, okay, um, that really, you know, sort of uh, puts well, you in well, we're, we're, times. We're all trying to become devotees, mm. but uh, actually mm. Prabhupada used the term, he didn't use the term devotee, he said Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is a special level of a devotee. Mm. So the Vaishnava, he said, we're trying to become Vaishnavas, we're trying to become Vaishnavas. But devotee, oh, that's already there, the devotion is there. Devotion is within everyone. Devotion is within the heart of every living entity, it just has to be awakened. So we're trying to awaken that devotion in the heart of everyone. Mm. So, we're encouraged to see uh, every, uh, we are encouraged to see other people as devotees and to think of them as devotees and not to think of ourselves as a devotee so we offer all respects to others and we're not anxious to be respected ourselves we think everyone's a devotee just like this uttama adhikari this mahabhagavat devotee the one on the topmost level he thinks everyone is already serving krishna only I am not serving Krishna. That's it, the, the topmost platform of the devotee. He appreciates others, he sees everyone, even those who may, may appear like, you know, they're not devotees, but he, he thinks, well, no, they're serving Krishna's energy. They may not be serving Krishna directly, but they're serving Krishna's energy. So in that way they're devotees. So he has that kind of vision, Uttama Adhikari. Therefore, one who is actually on that topmost level, 
they usually don't, do not bother to preach because they think everyone is already serving Krishna. They're already working for Krishna. I, 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 only I am not serving Krishna. I should try to take care of myself. I have no right, no qualification to preach to them. But sometimes one who is on the topmost level, he may come down to the Madhyam level in order to teach, in order to preach. Devotees, just like Srila Prabhupada. You know, Srila Prabhupada, sometimes he would, he would give realizations on the topmost level, seeing everybody as a devotee, but other times he would come down to the Madhyam level and he would preach and he would make distinction and he would talk, call some people rascals and so like that and, <laughs> and try to he make distinction between different people to, to, to preach and to teach Krishna consciousness to give the message of Krishna Consciousness to others. And so it's a, a, something which can change, you know, sometimes somebody may be, they may be Kanista and next moment they may have more Madhyam level and sometimes they may even come to the Uttama level. At different times, different situations, they may be acting on different levels of realization. But they're always devotees. The devotion is always there within them. So we have to encourage them in their devotional life. It's very important. Keep everybody devotee. Me, point, me, certain, certainly I don't agree to tell people, you're not devotee. That's not a nice thing to say to anybody. You're not a devotee. Oh, no. You think everyone's a devotee except for me. That's how the advanced devotee actually thinks like that. Thinks only I'm not a devotee, but the other people, they're all devotees. So, we, we try to bring other people into Krishna consciousness like that. Okay? Yes, Gurudev. Any Thank any you. other any other questions? No, any? Not for me. Thank you, so Maharaj. I think Jolene Mataji has a question. Yes, Jolene Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, we only have two minutes left. Is it okay for me to ask the question? Oh yeah, please go ahead. So. Um, yeah, this is about previous classes and uh, one of the things uh, the atheist says is that uh, one of the popular terms is uh, YOLO, you only live once. That's something that is interesting to us. And uh, sometimes the atheist also says that, hey, uh, you vegetarians, actually, uh, there's an opportunity for you to eat meat now that uh, the science has developed stem cell technology where meat tissues are replicated to uh, taste like meat. Uh, Guru Maharaj, how would you respond to this comment? Oh, vegetarian recipes that taste like meat. Yes, uh, stem cell, uh, stem cell, uh, uh, they replicate uh, meat tissues. So it's, you con do you consider uh, stem cell tissues as uh, living beings. Of course, the origin of it is uh, living beings, and I think that whether it's a replication or not, it still constitutes uh, uh, killing. So well, it's not all right, actually. It's certainly not something which devotee wants to take. I know sometimes they do have things like vegetarian meat, vegetarian fish, vegetarian chicken. You know, these things are there. In, in, the, the, some, some of the Buddhist restaurants, they cater this kind of thing. Because some people who are meat eaters have great difficulty to give up the taste of the meat and the fish and things. So they prepare these kind of dishes just to satisfy their taste buds. But 
in Krishna consciousness, we don't really encourage that kind of food. It's not really, it's not something we would offer to Krishna. We want to offer to Krishna what is natural, what is actually uh, vegeta pure vegetarian, made from vegetables and like that, and prepared in our own kitchen. We don't offer things like vegetarian chicken and so on, you know, that's not what devotee wants to be taking. Mm. And what okay, was Hare Krishna Maharaj. What was the first question you were you had about? Uh, uh, no, it was about uh, it was the first was a comment about uh, the ideology of you only live once. Right? Oh, you only uh, live once, right? Louis <laughs> is uh, getting more popular nowadays. You only live once. Mm -hmm. Well, we live once in, in this body, that's in relation to the body, yeah. But we've had many bodies. We've had many bodies. That's the point. Even in the one lifetime, the body the body's uh, changing so much. From childhood to youth to old age, the body changes. But the soul is the same. So we, we live. Okay. Uh, what about one more final question? Okay. Um, it seems that uh, uh, there's also a this that uh, asks us, but Krishna is so lives. So why don't you enjoy your life? So how should I come Well, you could say, well, I'm not God. God is the supreme enjoyer. I can't imitate Him. But I can enjoy my life. I do enjoy my life. I enjoy my life serving Him and, and chanting His name. I get a lot of pleasure from that. And so everyone has a right to choose how they want to live their life and how they enjoy, what, what things they enjoy. Yeah, we do enjoy our life. We enjoy it chanting Hare Krishna, we enjoy hearing about Krishna's pastimes, it's very pleasurable for us. To understand Krishna's wife said, takes, you have to be more advanced, you have to have more devotion to understand. That can be explained in the future. We will explain. Okay, we will stop here now. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.